Today, the latest weapons, coupled with the fighting skill of the American soldier, stand ready, on the alert all over the world, to defend this country, you, the American people, against aggression. This is the big picture, an official television report to the nation from the United States Army. Now, to show you part of the big picture, here is Sergeant Stuart Queen. The film you are about to see was produced as a troop information film, specially prepared to alert the American soldier against a hidden enemy, an enemy that can destroy morale, rob the soldier of the will to fight, and even trick him into surrendering. Enemy propaganda. Although this study of communist deception was made for a military audience, we think that you, the American public, will also find it pertinent and enlightening. In the words of an American hero, Patrick Henry, the gentleman cried, peace, peace, but there is no peace. And today, America cries, peace, peace to further the blessings of peace, to ensure peace, America today sends to every nation in her imperialist orbit the implements of peace, ammunition, rifles, bayonets, hand grenades, machine guns, bombing planes, fighter planes, and now even atomic cannons. The gentlemen from America may call that peace, but, but I, I have, have another word for it. it. I, I call it war. I call it America's master plan to enslave the world. Let no one be deceived by the American style peace. Let no one be deceived. That's what the man said. I don't think you need three guesses to know what this is all about. But let's listen a moment longer and see what's behind it. Peace is a word that sends cold shivers down the spines of American capitalists. Peace is what the whole world yearns for, prays for, longs for. But on Wall Street, it is a word that spells ruin. I say let the American warmongers beware. The people want peace, and we are the voice of the people. That was the voice of the Kremlin, or rather, one of its voices. There are lots of them around the world, speaking in every language. This material is just another sample of what you might call the communist war without guns. And this is some of their ammunition. I'm Colonel Foster. I'm going to be your guide for a short tour through the maze of communist propaganda. It's a strange, shadowy world of the doctored photograph, the misquotation, the insinuation, and the lie. Now, some of this material to us is comical. Some of it is tragic. Some of it's weird. Some of it's dull. But all of it has the single purpose of digging the grave of liberty. The grave diggers of communism have been trying to set America up for the kill for years. And it makes them very angry that we don't just collapse as per schedule. Listen to this. The living conditions of the American masses, that's you, are swiftly deteriorating. 
Our generation is going through the final convulsions of the dying world of capitalism. That's what it says here. And if you don't believe that pamphlet, try this one. Bankrupt America may have one more war in its decaying carcass, but her young men who face nothing but brute labor, poverty, and death may refuse to fight. That's what it says here. If you're assigned to duty overseas, you may see posters like this once in a while. That's you, in case you don't recognize yourself. Of course, we get a, a big chuckle out of stuff like this, but the bigger the lie, the bigger the laugh. But the grave diggers aren't laughing. They're deadly serious. And in some places around the still free world, some people believe them. Like to know what they're saying about you and all American soldiers? Well, in England, the communists call you arrogant gum chewers. They tell the Japanese you're pleasure-loving, pampered, juvenile delinquents. For Italian ears, the communists call you black marketeers bent on looting Europe. To the Austrians, they call you uncultured young thugs. To the Soviet-occupied countries of Eastern Europe, they say you are members of the gangster army of imperialist America. And to the people of Korea, the communists say you are cold-blooded murderers who tortured and shot and buried alive thousands of innocent civilians. Did you notice how the slander progressed from the gum chewers to juvenile delinquent to black marketeer to thug gangster, murderer. From you should be laughed at to you should be shot in just a few easy steps. How's your sense of humor now? I imagine that all of us gum-chewing, pampered, gangster murderers know why we're being slandered. It's because America is the major obstacle that stands between the grave digger and his intended victim. Here is target number one for the Reds. And who's in the bullseye? You are. Being in the bullseye, it's important to know something about the enemy's weapons and how to spoil their aim. That aim is nothing less than world conquest. And subversion by every possible means is the chief method used. The key word is conflict. Outside of the red countries themselves, conflict must be promoted everywhere. Every dissatisfaction must grow into a resentment. Every resentment must become an argument. Every argument must grow into a fight. Every fight must blossom into a riot. Every riot must expand into a war. And every war must end in devastation. For there in the ruins, communism finds its chance. For the communists, there must never be a compromise, never a settlement of disputes, only conflict. To Americans, none of it makes much sense. But wherever there is poverty, unemployment, disillusionment, there is also despair. And where there is despair, people may listen to anyone, to any plan that promises a change. In America, practically nobody listens. In all countries with stable government, civil liberties, and reasonable prosperity, communism makes little or no headway. The red countries cannot stand comparison in the light of day. That's one reason for the Iron Curtain that stretches across Eastern Europe from the Baltic Sea to the Mediterranean. The barrier works two ways. It keeps free men from seeing too much inside, and it keeps the slave world from glimpsing freedom. Back of that Iron Curtain is the biggest captive audience in the world. They don't have to sell them, just tell them. And what do they hear about themselves? Well, let's listen. 
Мы передавали специальную программу, посвященную сельскохозяйственному планированию в Азербайджане. At the recent meeting of the International Labour Organization, the question was raised by one of the American delegates as to why there are no strikes in the USSR. To the people of the Soviet Union, this is a foolish question. The reason why we do not have strikes is because we do not have exploitation of the workers. Here there are no capitalists and no landlords seeking profits at the expense of human welfare. As all of us know, in the Soviet Union, authority belongs to the working people. In no other country does the worker feel so much a part of his factory, his farm, his village, and his nation. Our workers do not grumble or strike. They leave that to the discontented masses of other countries who have not yet advanced to socialism. One has but to look around the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics to see on every hand evidence of our enormous progress. In Uzbekistan, there has been a mighty upswing in the economy and unprecedented cultural progress as well. Twice as many Uzbeks today receive higher education than in France, for example. In Czechoslovakia, Household appliances and motorcycles have ceased to be the goods exclusively for the rich. Today, they are available to all. In Belorussia, the people have received all equipment necessary for boosting agriculture, such as tractors and machines. We are a nation of happy builders in a blossoming land. You get the picture? For the people around Moscow, they say everything in Uzbekistan is wonderful. For the people in the Euro region, they say everything in Czechoslovakia is wonderful. For the people in the Ukraine, Bielorussia is a blossoming land. Wherever a Soviet citizen lives, he's told life is just a bowl of cherries somewhere else in the Soviet Union and it's up to him to work harder to catch up. As for America, the Soviet people are told that conditions here are hopeless. In their theaters, the Soviet see newsreels made up especially to show the terrible truth about us. This is America of the big capitalists. Wall Street with its big impressive buildings. But this is the real America where the workers live. Since they are underpaid, they must eke out a few pennies extra by peddling fruit on the streets. Almost every day in America, you will see police and goon squads attacking the workers who try to strike. But for the wealthy class, there is not a care in the world. Did you recognize those old newsreel scenes? You know how typical they are of America. As for the Soviet soldier, he is also a prime target for the Kremlin propagandists. The Soviet soldier's head may be full of propaganda and his ears may be ringing with lies, but he's still a soldier and a tough one. In all his life, he will never hear the truth about the other side. I said a moment ago that we're slandered by the Reds everywhere in the world. And we are. But every once in a while, the Kremlin changes the script. In the last 40 years, Russia's official attitude toward us has changed from friendship to hatred, back to friendship, and back to hatred again, no less than eight times. It all depends on the party line. In the crazy world of communism, today's friend is tomorrow's enemy. Today's hero is tomorrow's traitor. Lavrenti Beria chief of the Soviet secret police, hero of the people, shot as a traitor. Today's hero is tomorrow's traitor. Rudolf Slansky, leader of the Czechoslovakian Reds, hero of the people, hanged as a traitor. Laszlo Reich, 
leader of the Hungarian Reds, hero of the people, hanged as a traitor, and then found innocent, cleared of all charges, but too late. And here is the hero of heroes, genius, the benevolent father of all the Russians, who has been declared the greatest traitor of them all, the psychopathic murderer, after being hailed as a godlike leader for 30 years. It all depends on the party line, whether the Russian bear kills or caresses, scowls or smiles. And when the Reds start calling us their best friends, look out. That's what they said to us in some of their broadcasts over in Korea. And in these leaflets, they drop behind our lines. All of a sudden, they're our buddies. Dear conscientious friends, American officers, sergeants, and soldiers, the great desire of the Korean and Chinese People's Army is for justice and national independence. Are you really fighting for freedom? Do you not realize by now that you have been sent by the Wall Street merchants to crush Korea's attempt to gain independence? You cannot beat 500 million Chinese and Koreans. Our brave and heroic soldiers will never surrender. Don't let your capitalist leaders deceive you. Don't fight their aggressive war. Let all foreign troops withdraw from Korea. Go home and live in peace. Well, every GI in Korea wanted nothing more than to go home and live in peace if only the communists would do the same thing. But they didn't, of course, until we fought them to a standstill. Now let me introduce you to another communist. This is going to be hard to take, so brace yourselves. Hi, fellas. How are you today? Not so good, huh? Well, you know what General Sherman said about war. Oh, well, it'll only last seven or eight years, fellas. Of course, it could be less than that if your leaders would only listen to reason. But let's not talk about it. I'm going to play some real dreamy music for you. But first, I want to welcome some new fellows into the line, the 305th Infantry Regiment. I'm sorry the weather's so bad for you, we had planned to fix all the roads before you came. But there isn't much we can do about it now. Incidentally, keep your feet dry, fellas. Your medics can't do a thing for frozen toes. And your girlfriends back home don't want you crippled. Take it easy, huh? That's the way Seoul City Sioux entertained us in Korea. Nice music and a soft, sympathetic voice, selling discouragement and defeat. Digging graves, as all communists do, but lining them with velvet. But the men who heard that radio arn of charm were sometimes interrupted, and very rudely, too, like this. That's the way it went in Korea sometimes. First, the gentle voice, then the loudspeaker. They were interchangeable weapons in the communist war of words. Propaganda from the enemy in a combat zone like Korea is one thing. Propaganda in a peaceful country is something else. 
Most of you who will be stationed overseas will run into the second kind. At first, you may not notice that the grave diggers are as busy as ever, slandering us, trying to separate us from our allies. You'll go about your business for a long time, maybe, and then turn a corner one day and see it splashed across a fence or a wall. Or maybe on an ordinary street or square. Suddenly, you'll come across the party insignia on a doorway, and it'll remind you that the grave diggers are around. Or maybe you'll stop to look at a poster in some European town. You probably can't read the language, but the picture is plain enough. A while ago, I mentioned the importance of knowing the enemy's weapons and how to spoil their aim. Through your behavior and your friendly attitude, you can make a personal contribution toward combating communist accusations of gangsterism and gum-chewing arrogance. Here's another way to play it smart. Avoid any contact with political demonstrations and you'll stay out of trouble. The communists are good at making propaganda in a big, noisy way. And in a quiet, insidious way, too. It's a very bad mistake to rearm Germany. The Soviets are no fools. They will not allow it, even if it means war. France? It is a corpse. Propped up by American bayonets. No, no, my friend. France is not a nation. It is a staging area for Americans when they are ready to attack the Soviet Union. I do not say the Americans are bad, only mistaken. Where is this Soviet threat they talk about? Stalin is dead. The Soviets want only peace. So why don't the Americans go home? Well, if you hear enough of this kind of gossip planted by the communists, enough phony rumors of America's secret plans to launch a war, enough big lies, little lies, and medium-sized lies, maybe you'll begin to believe some of it. Maybe you'll begin to wonder if there isn't some truth in it. Maybe nobody really likes us. Maybe the world really thinks we're imperialistic warmongers. Maybe, maybe. Well, that's what the grave diggers want you to think. Because if you do, you're halfway in the bag. The fact is that every free nation in the world looks to America as the bulwark of liberty. The fact is, behind the Iron Curtain are millions of people to whom the voice of America is the only voice of hope in a world of darkness. The fact is, in the exchange of war prisoners after Korea, 27,000 one-time communists refused to go home after one glimpse of freedom. The fact is that all along the Austrian border, the Czech border, the East German border, every day, every hour, people are slipping across, swimming across, crashing across to freedom, telling their pitiful stories in the refugee centers asking only that they be allowed to stay on our side of the Iron Curtain. Their stories are all different, and yet always the same. If you heard a thousand or two of these stories, they'd begin to get monotonous. You'd think, isn't there an end to this? No, there is no end. Not until communism ends, under the weight of its own evils, and its own lies. Well, now you've seen a fair sample of enemy propaganda. Leaflets, magazines, broadcasts, posters, street demonstrations, rumors, agitation. They spend millions, but the funny thing is they don't get a dime's worth of good where people recognize the truth. It's as simple as that. If you know propaganda for what it is, you are protected from its lies. Not only that, you can take measures against it by giving the lie to the enemy at every turn. How? By realizing a simple fact. 
that in foreign eyes, you and your uniform are the image of America, and by conducting yourself accordingly. You're in the bullseye of the communists, target number one. And yet, our cause and our country can never be defeated unless we ourselves fail to uphold it. And that can never be as long as we act like Americans. And remember these words. I will never forget that I am an American fighting man responsible for my actions and dedicated to the principles which made my country free. I will trust in my God and in the United States of America. The best defense against enemy propaganda is truth. For a communist, a thing is true only if it advances the communist cause. It is false if it does not. The soldier who understands how enemy propaganda works is forewarned and forearmed. In this knowledge lies his strength. Now this is Sergeant Stuart Queen, inviting you to be with us again next week for another look at your army in action on the big picture. The Big Picture is a weekly television report to the nation on the activities of the Army at home and overseas. Produced by the Army Pictorial Center. Presented by the United States Army in cooperation with this station. You too can be an important part of the Big Picture. You can proudly serve with the best equipped, the best trained, the best fighting team in the world today, the United States Army.